Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. This is from author Brene Brown, the author of Rising Strong and Daring Greatly. The yoga of self-love and emotional resilience is about cultivating these qualities. And to do that, we must approach the emotional aspect of our practice, because that's where these qualities reside. In the workshop, there are no traditional asanas or body postures. The postures will be taking place in a different place inside of our body. To give you an idea of the tone and the intent of the workshop, because it is a unique workshop, I'd like to read from a few more books that support this practice. This is from a book called Emotional Freedom by Judith Orloff. I know how tempting it is to believe that something outside, a great job, meeting Mr. or Ms. Wright, winning the lottery, can make you feel okay and mollify envy and loneliness. For a while, this may seem to work, but an outer fix alone, no matter how gratifying, can't sustain self-esteem. And one more from the same book. Buddhist nun Pema Chodron warns against what she insightfully terms idiot compassion, using kindness to avoid conflict when a resounding no is required. I completely agree. To preserve our emotional freedom, we must know where to draw the line. This is pointing to the challenge of saying yes when we mean yes and no when we mean no. And that is not a mental challenge, that is an emotional challenge. And if that has been your challenge, like it's been my challenge, we will cover the topic of self-assertiveness, of being able to move your life forward, but do it in a socially appropriate way so that you're not being Mr. Nice Guy or Mr. Nice Girl and very passive and you're also not being the tyrant. Because when your self-assertiveness is out of balance, you're going to behave in one of those two manners. This is from Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. When we are in contact with our feelings and needs, we humans no longer make good slaves or underlings. This is from The Millionth Circle by Jean Shinoda Bolin. In myths and dreams and in our collective memory, women are remembered as they once were and could be, carriers of the sacred feminine. If patriarchy is to be healed and the planet restored, might woman's wisdom be needed? What is that woman's wisdom, the sacred feminine? And this is applicable no matter how we gender identify. I'm going to read you a list of the gift of emotions from our next selection. Emotions are in the domain of the sacred feminine. And these are some of the gifts of the sacred feminine. This is from the book called Your Resonant Self by Sarah Payton. Emotions bring a sense of aliveness, color, and nuance to our daily experiences. They let us know what is important. They help us learn and be capable of making change. They are signposts to what we most long for. Their expression improves health and diminishes post-traumatic stress. Emotions help us make decisions. They enrich experiences of connection and sexuality. They play an important role in memory. And my favorite quality of the gifts of emotions, emotions allow us to enter the edge of our unconscious world and begin to heal. And this last one is from the book called Soulcraft by Bill Plotkin. As I'm reading this, see if you would like more of this in your yoga practice, if you'd like to cultivate more of this tone and intent for yourself. There's so much more to who you are than you know right now. You are indeed something mysterious, something magnificent. You hold within you, secreted for safekeeping in your heart, a great gift for this world. 
although you might sometimes feel like a cog in a huge machine, that you don't really matter in the great scheme of things. The truth is, is that you are fully eligible for a meaningful life, a mystical life, a life of the greatest fulfillment and service. Your practice can help you cultivate this level of depth and richness and imbue it into your life and saturate your life with meaning and purpose. If you would like to learn how to bring this to your practice, come join us.